I've got a special guest with me, Pete Smith, publisher of Brown's Digest for Fan Nation, which is the network that I work for as well. Uh, Pete, you're not out here in the Bay Area, but I guess there's a fantasy among Niner fans that the Niners are going to trade Jimmy Garoppolo and get something good for him. And I think they're thinking it's going to happen soon. He's going to start throwing. And one of the teams that's obvious is the Browns because Deshaun Watson could be suspended. Do you think there's anything to the rumor or the fantasy that the Niners could trade Jimmy Garoppolo to Cleveland? Yes, but not in the way 49ers fans are thinking. In other words, the dream scenario for the Browns is to trade Baker Mayfield's guaranteed salary. It's $18.8 million. They don't want to pay it. If they trade him to the 49ers for Jimmy Garoppolo, who's scheduled to make like 24.2 base salary plus some bonuses, that's a win for the 49ers in the sense that they save a little bit of money. But it's a huge win for the Browns because it's all base salary for Jimmy Garoppolo. And what the Browns could do is turn around and cut him. And they get away from all $18.8 million of guaranteed salary. And this has been the whole thing that has been holding up the issue because whatever you think of Baker Mayfield, he almost doesn't matter anymore to this conversation. He's, he's a pretty good quarterback. He has talent. He's had his moments. Certainly he's somebody that I think could work with a guy like Kyle Shannon. And there are a number of other teams that he's simply better than what they have. But when you deal with owners who are billionaires, they do not want to be told what to do. And in this whole thing with Deshaun Watson, you have a bunch of billionaires who have effectively been told, this is how you're going to manage your quarterback. And now you have to deal with it. And there are owners who have bought into the league and had it, you know, have more money than God that it doesn't matter, but they still don't want to be told. And then you have the guys who inherited franchises who cannot afford to put $200 million in escrow for anything. Um, And, and they will have to figure out ways around this. Like you could see Cincinnati doing like a bit, basically the Kirk cousins deal for Joe Burrow in a couple of years. And that's going to be an issue. That's going to be a question mark. You also have situations like Carolina and David Tepper is not poor. He's, he's in great shape financially. But David Tepper lost to the, the uh, for D- Deshaun Watson mm-hmm. and now doesn't want to have to give the Browns – They don't. he doesn't want to do them a favor right. by bailing them out of this contract when he also has to pay like $18.5 million for Sam Darnold. So from Carolina's standpoint, and, and you're looking at this and you're going, Matt Rule – goes, I want a job. I want to, I want to keep working here. So I, you know, I I see Sam Darnold. He's not going to keep me employed. Baker Mayfield might, but David Tepper's looking at this going, I don't want to pay $37 million and maybe I'm not all that attached to you. So you have some of these owners and that's not the only one who I think these coaches are basically like using what mini camp was a big one. I think these coaches are basically trying to get these owners to look at on the field and go, are you sure we have enough? And, and, and it's tough, and I don't know where that's going to come out. But the 49ers are interesting because they, they, they do have a benefit from this standpoint. Uh, you know, Baker Mayfield could easily step in and be the backup. There's no controversy there because even though he's had success, there's no baked-in expectation with him. You get your ability to go, Trey Lance is our dude. We gave up everything for him. He could be great. And then if, if there's a problem – you have Baker Mayfield who can play and, you know, step in if need be, or if Trey Lance you know, whacks his thumb or something, you can have a guy who can come in and step in for a couple of weeks. If, if the four, if this were to happen, would the Niners have to take back Baker Mayfield? Is that the only way they can offload Jimmy Garoppolo on Cleveland? Yes. I mean, look, the Browns are Deshaun Watson's cap number is not a very big deal, but they are, they are literally giving him $45 million. Yeah. Uh, and they are literally giving Baker Mayfield eighteen point eight million dollars, right, in and cash this year. In in cash, the, yeah, this is cash money, right. So are they going to turn around and spend twenty four point two million dollars on another guy? Right, it's not impossible because Jimmy Haslam's doing quite well for himself, but that's a lot of money. And not to mention the two hundred million in escrow that goes in next year, right? Yeah, and, and, and you know he like just an unbelievable amount of money being spent, and then. Right. 
they have to make the decision, is Jimmy Garoppolo better enough to sort of, you know, if Deshaun Watson's out for the season, maybe Jimmy Garoppolo gets you to the playoffs. But if you look at the AFC, is he better than any of the quarterbacks? And I'm, I'm talking about just the teams who are serious. Team, you know, He's better than Tua. The Dolphins are a team that thinks they're in the playoff team, but he is better than Tua. Maybe he is better than, you know, what are we at? Like 45-year-old Ryan Tannehill at this point? Yep. Maybe. I mean, he, honestly, they are the same quarterback. I mean, those guys right. are basically clones of each other. But if you're talking about Joe Burrow twice, Lamar Jackson twice. Uh, better you know, than Mr. Bisky, maybe. Yeah, you know, yeah, he, he, which is fine. And those are two games they yeah. have to win. Yeah. But they also have to play Justin Herbert. They also right. have to play, you know, just an endless supply of fantastic quarterbacks. Russell Wilson, they have to play him. I mean, and they, you know, the one, the one NFC team, they, they only play four, and one of them is going to be Tom Brady. I mean, God love him. Jimmy Garoppolo is not better than Tom Brady when he's 56. So yeah. that that's sort of where it is. Like that that's that cost benefit analysis. And I just don't think it works out. Then you add in this latest wrinkle. And frankly, I think this whole podcasting fiasco is like is ultimately going to be sort of working backwards as to justifying why things are the way they are with Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. Um, you had the the you had Martellus Bennett, who is it is the year 2022 right now. He is yeah. very upset about 2016. Unreal. I didn't think it was physically possible to be that angry about something six years ago. And, and he, so he goes on to the, the McCourty Brothers podcast, and yeah. he just unloads on Jimmy Garoppolo. And what, what I thought was fascinating, I, I just watched the video before talking to you. I didn't realize the McCourty guys were just sitting there la laughing the whole time. They are, yeah. I yeah. mean, they're they're not they're not arguing. They're not Team stopping him. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you follow this. He uses incredibly harsh language. I mean, you know, for our purposes, we'll just say he thinks Jimmy Garoppolo is soft. Yeah. Uh, but then you follow this up with uh, Brandon Marshall's podcast has Julian Edelman on, and he just hands him a piece of paper. I don't know why he did it like this, but whatever. Brandon Marshall's entertaining. It's more dramatic. <laughs> yeah. And he makes him read the Martellus yeah. Bennett quote, and Julian Edelman reads it, and then immediately goes, I get it. I understand. I was angry, too. In 2022, I'm yeah. angry yeah. about 2016. Yeah. And here's the thing. You know who they stuck up for, both of them? Jacoby Brissett. You know who's also yeah. in Cleveland right now? Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett. So, and I, here's the thing. I, I want to make this very clear. I do not think Jacoby Brissett would go to the Browns and go, I'm going to have a problem if you bring in Jimmy Garoppolo. What I think would happen potentially is because players talk. Yeah. It will be other players who go – because Jacoby Brissett is, is a popular player. Like wherever he's been, he's been a popular guy. And then, you know, and again, talking about Jimmy Garoppolo as soft, they immediately go to Jacoby Brissett playing with a with – a, you know, no ligaments in his thumb and being, yeah. you know, being a tough guy and being all those things that, you know, guys respect. So what I think might happen is if the Browns were thinking about Jimmy Garoppolo in earnest as about a quarterback, because, you know, Jacoby Brissett is functional. Jimmy Garoppolo is better than Jacoby Brissett. How much better? Maybe a win, maybe two wins. I mean, it's right. not. Yeah. But if he's healthy. Yeah. Which yeah. is why, right. why we're here. I mean, right. Uh, but. It wouldn't surprise me if players on the Browns were sort of quietly muttering that Why? we like Jacoby Brissett. We don't, you know, we don't want you to do this effectively to Jacoby Brissett. And given what is going on with Deshaun Watson, I think that becomes a very delicate situation. And I don't think they want anything else to sort of give them a reason to have an excuse with this season to be, you know, focused and and you know if, if they don't have Deshaun Watson they still want them to be playing for something and I think even though Jimmy Jimmy Garoppolo is a marginal upgrade in talent I think there are questions there and you know for you know you're watching guy and Baker Mayfield has been crushed by fans in Cleveland but he's being crushed for playing through pain and maybe that was the wrong decision 
I know what will happen if Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt and doesn't play. What, the first thing that will happen will be, well, is he really hurt? Because now he's in a contract year, and they threw it out there and, and even defended Jimmy Garoppolo at some point that Martellus Bennett's like, well, he's kind of holding out for a contract. I get it. He didn't want to ruin his body. Jimmy Garoppolo is 30. He's going to be 31. Yeah, He's not looking at this as like – make or break you know he may want to win he may want to go to the playoffs he may want to do well because that will help him but if he goes down if he's grabbing at his ankle he's grabbing at an elbow he's grabbing at a hand the first thing that's going to go through everybody's head is how hurt is he yeah yeah and it's like you got rid of baker mayfield for this the you know, opposite baker, it's yeah the opposite. The opposite. Baker, yeah baker's supposed to be tough so it seems like for this to happen it's a very awkward fit for Jimmy Garoppolo in Cleveland for the reasons you just laid out. I mean, they're loyal to Jacoby in that in that locker, kind of like how the Patriots were. And then on the Niners' end, they'd have to bring back Baker Mayfield and have that circus where he's backing up Trey Lance and they're saying, no, but we really believe in Trey Lance. We really love Trey Lance. No. It's like, yeah, uh-huh. That, I mean, the optics of that are just horrendous. So, I mean, the more we talk about it, the more it seems like probably not going to happen. Yeah, the, the, I think from the 49ers standpoint, and, and I know their GM is – has he ever won a trade? Uh, but – but, but Fair, fair. What, what fair. I would say, if, if, I were, if I were in his position and I wanted to win a trade, I would make sure that the Browns included a sweetener in the form of a, like a third-round pick. Okay. Because at that point, you can say, one, I'm saving some money which they, you know, right in their position, they can use. Now, obviously, they could cut Jimmy Garoppolo and and get a whole lot of money back, but they also want to have a quarterback. They can at least say, hey, we have an asset that we got back in this, so we're not just handing him out, handing him off and and, and sort of making like that. But, you know, like I said, the most reasonable course of action for the Browns would be to trade Jimmy Garoppolo, trade for Jimmy Garoppolo for the sake of saving that 18-point million turning around and cutting him. Yep. And and then he gets to go to wherever he wants, which is a great situation for Jimmy Garoppolo, but it's it's entirely a bookkeeping thing for that, which is weird. The whole thing for both of these teams is bookkeeping. Real quick, so explain this because I know that Jimmy's contract, they can there's really no guaranteed money. They can cut him and save everything. Not not so with Baker. They can't cut him. They have to trade him. That, that's that's the whole otherwise the whole it's, deal. Got it's it. 18.8 million dollars and whoever has him on their team is paying it now got it. that's the whole question uh, you know and and this might be the other part of the, the the other angle of the 49ers play it and they say well well if you take half of baker mayfield's salary and you you, you make it nine million for us and at that point it does become a little attractive for the 49ers. And I and I and don't get me wrong, I understand all the points you're making about what does this say about Trey Lance. Sure, but at sure. least at that point, your quarterback room is making what like 12 million dollars as a whole. Good point. So yeah. there is something that sort of benefits them, but yeah, I mean he's the backup right now is Nate Sudfeld. Yeah, and and we you know, I I I assume they feel good about Trey Lance, but you know, I've kept track. I, I see some of your coverage and it sounds like they're well, they haven't really committed to him yet, have they, Pete? <laughs> no. So, no. Uh, so look, if, if you get Baker Mayfield is effectively nine million dollars, yeah, and you get some, if you get a pick like a third round pick, a fourth round pick for Baker Mayfield, I see the upside, and and then at that point, John Lynch can go, I want to trade, and he'll be one in whatever he's at, and like honestly, that would be a pretty good situation, and then they don't have to they don't have to eat anything in terms of we cut Jimmy Garoppolo because they can at least say we got stuff. And at that point it's on the Browns for what they want to do. So I I, I see some upside, but ultimately it's a very convoluted, weird situation that becomes a bookkeeping thing at best. So, but but here's the thing, like considering what's going on and and the owner stuff that everywhere else is going, it's probably as likely as any of these things right now. I, I think ultimately Baker Mayfield will be traded. I mean, just, makes sense because somebody's going to be bad enough to need him. I hate, again, he is a good quarterback. Like I, this is yeah, the thing yeah. that people gloss over. He's a good quarterback. Now you may not want him past more than one year, which is part of the problem, but um, yeah. I don't see why the Seahawks don't have him already. I don't get that. 
I, I don't either. And and the fact of the matter is, I, I I don't understand how what Pete Carroll is playing for. Uh, you know, is he tanking? Yeah, but is Pete Carroll tanking? God, be, be, because he went. What is he? Seventy two. Uh, older. It's got to be older than that. I, I yeah. I mean, it just seems like something he wouldn't do. But maybe he is. He like knows. that. That to me, I always looked at it is if they were willing to get rid of Russell Wilson, they had a thought of a way for them to at least contend and feel good. And here's the thing with the Seahawks. They loved Baker Mayfield ahead of the 2018 draft to the point that they were willing to trade Russell Wilson to the Browns for the number one overall pick. Now, yeah, and this is the thing. Not only did John Dorsey not take that deal, he took the most Russell Wilson-esque quarterback of that class. And don't get me wrong, I like Baker Mayfield. I thought he was the, the right pick. But if you're asking me, would I have traded for Russell Wilson for the number one overall pick? Yeah, in a heartbeat. He's going to be yeah. a Hall of Famer. And, yeah. you know, their GM at the time didn't do it. But so in, in the psychological and just sort of how the makeup, Baker Mayfield is the ultimate Pete Carroll guy. He's the ultimate – like Pete Carroll has made a career out of taking guys who are like, you know, I don't want to say maladjusted, but uber competitive or, or hot-headed or sensitive or whatever and getting a lot out of those guys. Like he's the perfect fit for that. So – well, maybe that's the reason the Niners should get Baker Mayfield, because if they don't get him, Seattle could. And that could be a good team. Right. And th that's the other part is uh, yeah. you could play chess essentially against them. And, and yeah. then, yeah, maybe maybe at that point, if they if if uh, they trade Garoppolo to the Browns, they cut him, maybe Seattle signs him, and then you get two more wins. Well, last thing I want to say real quick before I let you go is if if the Browns trade for Jimmy Garoppolo just to turn around and cut him, can you imagine how amused Jimmy uh, Julian Edelman would be? Well, the thing the thing is, you would I would expect all kinds of tweets from oh. anyone who was on that team, or yeah. you know, I you know, in, in some of the cases, like when Baker Mayfield sort of had his downfall, there were a couple of players that sort of yeah. tweaked him. Duke Johnson was a notable right. one that got after him because he sort of like told Duke Johnson to get on the trade oh, during right, a right. contract issue, which is you know you don't do that, right? Um, right. We will get a very real feeling of how people feel about Jimmy Garoppolo if that if that were to go through. I can't wait. Pete, thank you very much.